everyone gets hurt at some point in their life. It's kind of a fact of life that at some point you're going to get an ouch from just existing in the world. Most of the time, injuries are small and relatively unimportant. We get hurt, we heal, and we move on. But sometimes the ways that we get injured are very stupid or just flat out bizarre. And Lord knows I've got a lot of weird ones. So gather around, dear friends, and I will tell you some of the dumbest ways I have ever injured myself. But first, a quick Hey Star, What You Drawin' bit for the video. The art playing in the background is the art for my Patreon's mail club for December of 2022. It's unfortunately no longer available because it took so long for me to get this video out. I was so swamped with cons and family obligations and finally catching the big C-word disease in December that I pretty much just gave up on getting any new stuff done for the channel before then. But if you're intrigued by the art or the characters, you should check out my webcomic cast off, link in the description. And we're moving right along to the actual video. So, for those who are squeamish, none of these stories will be too graphic, but I'll go ahead and get the worst one of them out up front. The only time I've ever broken a bone was when I was riding my scooter to class in college and got cut off by a truck who decided not to stop at a stop sign. I slammed into his passenger side door, going 50 on my little motorbike, and only ended up with a slightly broken wrist, a black eye, a few chipped teeth, and a bad concussion. I don't even remember the accident, just driving down the road and suddenly being on a gurney in the hospital staring at the ceiling and cussing out the doctors for not answering my questions. <laughs> But the fact I was able to get away with only fairly minor injuries led to some of my coworkers at my old job to think I had some kind of super skeleton a la Wolverine or something. Oh, and a fun aside about this incident, this happened in 2012, right around the time that the But You Didn't Have To Cut Me Off song was the hottest meme of the century. And I remember when I woke up in the hospital, my roommate was standing next to me, and when she told me that I had been in an accident after a guy cut me off in traffic, I immediately told her to take a photo of my messed up face and make a meme of it. I won't show the full photo because there's some blood and stuff in it, but here's proof that it exists, so enjoy that fun little tidbit. So if you can handle that story, you can handle the rest of what this video has to offer. So let's get into it. This is the dumbest ways I've ever hurt myself, including that time I got stabbed by a bouncy castle. Let's go. The first time I remember getting really hurt was when I was in second grade. My parents, my brother, and I were hanging out at my grandparents' house. My brother was a toddler at the time, and he had somehow come across one of my mom's old twirling batons. It was a metal stick about a foot long with rubber tips at the end. He had been playing with it most of the day, and at one point during the evening, he just started spinning around with it. I was sitting on the floor watching TV when suddenly, wham, he hit the thing right into my eye. I didn't quite know what had happened. I just knew that I was very suddenly in a lot of pain. My parents were outside in the garage hanging out with the grandparents, and my eye hurt so bad I couldn't really stand up to go get them, so I ended up just screaming as loud as I possibly could, just bent over, hands over my eye, and shrieking until they eventually heard me and came running inside. They ended up taking me to the ER. Thankfully, the injury wasn't too bad. I think I had a slight scratch in my cornea or something that I had to take eye drops for a few times a day, and my brother wasn't allowed to play with the baton anymore. But thankfully, I was able to recover pretty quickly. Moving along to high school, I tried out a lot of different sports during my childhood, but the first one I ever really got into was when I joined Color Guard. If you're unfamiliar, if you've ever seen a marching band show and there's a bunch of people with flags running around on the field and dancing between band formations, that's Color Guard. I did that. I was even captain my senior year, which was pretty neat. But Color Guard isn't the safest extracurricular activity, and the main thing we did was throw flags and fake guns and swords into the air and then catch them. There's, uh a lot of potential for injuries there. All the Color Guard kids were always sporting pretty gnarly bruises from equipment accidents, and we wore them like battle scars. But what we were doing was still pretty dangerous, and there were some serious injuries occasionally. 
Thankfully, I never had anything super serious happen, but I did mess up my hand pretty badly once. We were practicing inside the school building, and I was working on my saber tosses. At one point, I threw my saber too high, and it hit the ceiling and started falling back down straight towards me. I reached out to catch it, but for some reason, reached out with the palm of my hand facing down. The saber fell onto the back of my hand, smashed into my knuckles, then bounced to the side and took a chunk out of the brick wall I was standing next to. The wall had been painted over a few times, and there was now a quarter-sized spot of brown paint in the middle of the white brick wall. My instructor saw what happened, made sure I was okay, and then just silently put a piece of white electrical tape over the hole to cover the damage. And then I had to sit out with an ice pack on my hand for a while. That one hurt for several days, and I couldn't type for even longer, but I was worried about losing a fingernail, and thankfully that didn't happen, so could have been worse. Despite all the strange ways I've hurt myself, most of them have never left a permanent scar. Most of them. When I was in sixth grade, a friend of mine had a birthday party at her house. One of the birthday activities was playing with a piñata. They didn't have a good tree to hang it from, so instead they tied the piñata to the second story railing and had it hang down into their foyer, and each of us took turns putting on a blindfold and taking a whack at it with a broom handle. <laughs> but at one point, I noticed a few pieces of candy had fallen out. I remember saying very clearly, don't hit the piñata, I'm gonna pick up those pieces of candy to get them out of the way really quick, and then I hit the ground. I don't even remember feeling the broom handle hit my head, I was bent over grabbing the candy, and then suddenly I just passed out for a few seconds. When I woke up, all my friends were gathered around me, and I guess my head was bleeding a lot. Someone grabbed some paper towels and band-aids to try and stop the bleeding, while my friend's mom called my mom so she could come pick me up. But, uh, <laughs> here's the thing. My friend's parents didn't speak very good English, and her being super panicked about an injured child likely didn't help. So the phone call my mom apparently got was basically just along the lines of, Um, star hit on head. There is blood. Please come. <laughs> to which my mother panicked and drove straight to my friend's house thinking I was dying and was going to get taken away in an ambulance with a chunk taken out of my skull. But when she arrived, she just saw me chilling, laying on the floor with a bunch of paper towels on my head. I'm pretty sure they had managed to stop the bleeding by the time my mom got there, and I even got upset when she made me leave the party because I wanted to stay and hang out with my friends. We hadn't even had cake yet. Anyway, my mom took me home and stuck me in the bath to wash off all the blood and look at the wound. It wasn't deep, thankfully, but there was a lot of blood because head wounds tend to bleed a lot. She opted not to take me to the ER since it was a school night and it probably wasn't bad enough to need stitches, and the scar healed by itself over the next few weeks. But now I have a bald spot about the size of a quarter on the size of my head from where I got hit. You can't usually see it unless I part my hair in a super weird way, but uh, it's there and it's very visible if I run my fingers through my hair the right way. And also, up until a few years ago, I used to be able to activate the ASMR tinglys on command whenever I touched it. I found out years later that this was nerve damage, but unfortunately my nerves must have healed at some point because it, it doesn't work anymore. Now whenever I touch it, it it's just sore. Lame. This was the most significant head injury of my life, but it was by far not the only one. My most recent and probably funniest story happened a few years ago, right before I moved to Japan for my new teaching job. I would be moving to Shizuoka at the end of July and had quit my job at the end of June to give myself a few weeks to pack up my apartment and get all my affairs in order. Now, some important details for this story. Number one, I had quit my job and was currently between jobs slash unemployed. Number two, I had spent most of July moving out of my apartment and was living with my parents at the time of the story because all my furniture was in a storage unit. I still had my apartment, I was just not fully moved out of it yet. Three, my birthday was in June, which was less than a month before this incident occurred. A few days before the big move, some friends invited me to go ice skating. 
There was a nerds and cosplayers night happening at the local ice rink, and it would be my last chance to see most of them before leaving for several years. I wasn't really good at skating, but was happy to be able to spend some time with them before the move. When we got to the skate rink, I rented some skates and tried doing a few laps around the rink. I realized that I stumbled a lot when I was trying to go slowly, but if I skated faster, I was able to stay balanced a little easier. So I ended up trying to skate faster. And faster. And faster, and you see where this is going. At some point, when I was at max speed and thinking about how cool and competent I probably looked, I hit a gash in the ice and started to fall forwards. I tried to correct by leaning backwards, and, well, ice skates have little teeth that grip the ice at the front of the blades, but there's nothing to help you if you fall backwards. And since I was already going pretty fast, the fall was as magnificent as it was painful. My ice skate slid out from underneath me so fast that I saw my feet silhouetted against the ceiling in bullet time, and I had just enough time to think, well, that's not where those are supposed to be before landing with my full body weight on the back of my skull. The ice ring staff saw what happened and pretty quickly came over to shuffle me off the ice and give me a quick exam. They were in the process of checking me for a concussion since I landed on my head so hard, and they started asking me questions. They asked me if I knew what day it was. Since I had quit my job and hadn't been working, my internal calendar was super messed up. They asked me what my address was, and I hesitated because I was in the middle of moving, and my legal address was still my apartment, but I was currently living with my parents. They asked me how old I was, and I had just had a birthday and hesitated for just a little bit too long. So the conversation basically went as follows. Them. What day is it? Me. Um, I don't know. Them. Okay, so what's your address? Me. Uh, them. How old are you? Me. Uh, (laughs) the two ice rink workers looked at each other like, yeah, this girl has a concussion and we need to call an ambulance. But in a panic, I blurted out, I don't have a concussion. I'm just stupid, homeless, and unemployed. They let me go and didn't call an ambulance, but I wasn't allowed back on the ice for the rest of the evening, which I think was fair. (laughs) Now, I said earlier that I've only broken one bone in my life, and this is true, but I once sprained my ankle so bad that it was basically broken. Cut to college orientation. All the students have been divided up into small groups based on our major, and our group leaders give us a quick tour around the city before sitting us down in a small park square. We play a few icebreaker-type games before starting a challenge game. The idea is that all 20 of us will walk around, and one person is secretly it. The person who is it can kill other people by making eye contact and pointing at someone secretly. And then that person has to wait about three seconds, then pretend to die as dramatically as possible before sitting out for the rest of the game. And when it was my turn to die, I took my death performance. Very seriously. The whole nine yards, gasping, clutching my chest, and screaming dramatically, and twisting my ankle as I dropped down to the grass. It was a little sore, but I figured I would probably be fine if I could just rest it a bit. However, there wasn't really any time to rest. After the game was over, we had to walk about a quarter mile to the school theater to watch a presentation, then back to the main assembly hall another half mile away. So instead of resting my aching ankle, I had to walk almost a mile on it before meeting back up with my parents. I could have said something to our orientation leaders, but again, I figured it was just sore and the pain would subside eventually. And then it didn't. When I met back up with my parents, they asked why I was limping. I told them how I had hurt my ankle, but it was fine and I just needed to maybe put some ice on it. We got lunch in the school's dining hall, I propped up my foot on a chair, and to my surprise, the pain didn't go away. In fact, over the course of our hour-long lunch, the pain got worse and worse until it was basically unbearable, and my parents ended up shoving me in my dad's truck and taking me to the ER. The ER staff ended up putting my foot in a pseudo-cast. It was a fiberglass leg splint form-fitted to the back of my leg, and then they wrapped it up really securely with several ace bandages. 
They gave me crutches and told me not to walk on it and that I had to go back and see a specialist for a checkup in a few weeks. My parents were beside themselves and almost extended their hotel stay so they could stay with me and make sure I was doing okay for the first few days of college. But I convinced them to go home. They had jobs to get back to and I could handle myself. And by handle myself, I of course mean disregard everything the hospital told me, take off my cast the next morning, and continue with life as usual. (laughs) Don't judge me. First of all, it wasn't broken. It was just sprained. And when I woke up the next morning, most of the pain in my ankle was gone anyway. Also, I did not want to be the kid on crutches on the first day of school, especially since I had to ride a bus to all of my classes, and I needed to go walk around town and buy a ton of art supplies for classes the next day. I ended up removing the fiberglass splint, wrapping my ankle really tight with the ace bandages the hospital gave me, shoving that foot into a tennis shoe, and I could basically walk around unimpeded. I probably added a few weeks to my recovery time doing this, it was about two months before the lingering soreness was completely gone, but it was a hell of a lot easier than being on crutches for a month, so I regret nothing! So, we're just about at the end of the list, but of course, I promised a story about getting stabbed, and you're gonna get one. I was just saving it for last. The year is 2022, my senior year of high school. I was a member of my school skills USA club, which was basically a nerd club for techie kids of many different disciplines to compete with other techie nerd kids across the country. A few friends and I were in it, along with about 15 other kids from our school. We had all competed in the regional qualifiers and moved on to the state level contest, a big multi-day conference in Corpus Christi down on the coast. Kids from high schools all over the state would be there to compete, so naturally, it was a great way for us to meet other teens and make friends. Except that none of us wanted to do that. This was a group of 20-something techie nerd introverts, and when we weren't competing, most of us just wanted to go back to our hotel rooms and play Pokemon since HeartGold and SoulSilver had just come out. Our chaperone and club sponsor, I'll call her Miss T, wasn't having it, however, and told us that on the first night we would be there, there would be a party and social gathering that all the schools were invited to. We whinged about not wanting to go, but she was determined to get us to socialize, and told us that if we didn't go to the party, she'd dock our grades for her class. So we all had to go to the party. Here's the thing about this party, though. It sucked. (laughs) The party venue was an approximately 100 by 100 foot section of the parking lot behind our hotel that was fenced off with a chain link fence and looked like it hadn't been used in years. There were weeds growing up through the pavement and there weren't any trees to block out the Texas evening sun. That, combined with the black top of the parking lot, meant it was hot as hell. The only shade were a couple of easy up tents along the edge of the parking lot and the adults that were chilling under them to supervise us gave us dirty looks when we tried to sit under them. In the center of the parking lot was an enormous speaker blasting the hottest pop songs of the day in an ear-splitting volume. It was hard to even think with Taylor Swift playing so loud it could probably be heard miles away. And aside from that, there was only one real source of entertainment at this party. Four inflatable bounce houses lined up on one side of the parking lot fence. They had to entertain high schoolers, and they rented bounce houses. Which isn't terrible, but the worst part of this party is that our school was the only one that showed up. When we arrived at this quote-unquote party, we all looked at Miss T and moaned that we should be allowed to ditch and go back upstairs to our hotel rooms. She had forced us to come so we could socialize with kids from other schools, And there weren't any kids from other schools here. But she was adamant that surely other schools would show up eventually, and made us all go in and enjoy ourselves. So, in an attempt to entertain ourselves, we started playing in the bounce castles. So, there were four of these things. Three of them were just your standard inflatable room types that were just big square rooms you could bounce around inside. But the last one was one of the big obstacle course types. Two lanes with various inflatable obstacles, including a 20-foot tall ramp you had to climb up and slide down on the opposite side that dumped you out at the exit. We ended up splitting off into twos and racing each other on the obstacle course one, cheering for our friends as they ran through the course trying to beat each other's times. 
and eventually it was my turn to go. I was up against one of the more athletic boys in the group, and while I had a little bit of jock energy from being in color guard, my flag twirling and dancing skills didn't translate very well to running an obstacle course. I think I ended up being a good 30 seconds slower than the guy I was racing against, and by the time I slid down the slide at the end of the course, I was exhausted, and I just slid down on my stomach in defeat. <laughs> After my run was over, I got up, dusted myself off, and went back over to my small group of friends who greeted me with horrified faces and yelled, Star, oh my god, what happened? And I was confused because I didn't know what they were talking about until I looked down and saw that my shirt was covered in blood. It was a pastel yellow shirt with a brand new dark red and very visible blood stain on the bottom side that was gradually growing slowly bigger. Somehow, while I was running through the inflatable obstacle course, I had managed to stab myself on something, and it was now bleeding profusely. The cut wasn't deep or painful, so I hadn't noticed it at first, but sure enough, there it was, bleeding out and staining one of my favorite shirts. My friends dragged me over to the first aid session under the Easy Up tents, and they patched me up by basically just taping a piece of gauze to my stomach and telling me not to play on the bouncy house anymore, which, wow, super helpful. Thanks. The silver lining, though, was that my friends used my very visible and obvious injury to convince Miss T that I needed to go back to the hotel and rest, and since they were my roommates for the weekend, they should go with me so we didn't all get lost or mugged on our way back to the hotel. We had to use the buddy system after all, they had drilled that into us on the bus ride down here. We couldn't walk around individually, and I was grievously injured, so my two roommates had to come with me, obviously. Miss T seemed really irritated, as if I had stabbed myself on purpose, but she relented and let us go back to the hotel and skip the rest of the party. And all it cost me was a little blood and a fun shirt that I liked. I figured out a little bit later what had happened. As part of our uniforms for the conference, we all had name tags with little alligator clips that we attached to our shirts during the event. And during the party, I had taken mine off and attached it to the waistband of my jeans. Then, during the obstacle course, when I slid down on my stomach, it must have come loose and either snagged on my skin or stabbed into me when I laid down on it. Um, and it stabbed me just enough to cause bleeding, but I didn't feel it right away because of the adrenaline. Again, it wasn't a bad injury, it just happened to bleed a lot and it didn't even leave a scar. Honestly, getting the medical tape off my stomach the next morning was way more painful than the actual injury. Seriously, though, that stuff is like duct tape. Have you ever tried to peel duct tape off a of bare skin? It hurts so bad. Anyway, I eventually recovered from that horrifying and traumatic injury, and now I get to tell people that I got stabbed on a bouncy castle, which is a very fun icebreaker. What doesn't kill me makes me interesting at parties, and also makes for a fun story time video. So, dear friends, what's the most bizarre way you've ever injured yourself? Drop the story in the comments, and if you want more storytime videos or art content like this, you should hit that subscribe button. Okay, later. Uh, some quick notes for the outro. I wanted to thank you guys for helping me hit my subscriber goal for 2022. I originally set out to try and hit 5,000 subs before the end of the year, but figured it probably wouldn't happen because I wasn't really able to upload anything last month. And then several of my videos ended up getting caught in the algorithm, and not only did I smash through 5k at the beginning of December, I managed to actually hit 6,000 before the end of the year, and that's wild. Like, YouTube is still one of my smallest platforms, but it just feels different than, say, TikTok or Instagram. I'm not sure why, it just does. So I guess I'll just say that I'm glad you guys like my silly little videos. Here's to a successful 2023. As for what's coming up in the future, I'm planning on doing Artist Alley reviews for both of my December cons, that's Anime Frontier and Holiday Matsuri. And then I will also be at IkiCon in Austin this month, so I'll ideally be making a video about that one too. And I have a few more art story time videos lined up, as well as a few tutorial-ish videos about art stuff. It's all kind of a work in progress, but I should have those out over the next couple of months. 
Lastly, like I said, this art was for last month's Patreon Mail Club, so unfortunately it isn't available anymore, but you can still read all 600 plus pages of my webcomic Cast Off for free at castoff-comic.com, so please go check it out. My comic's eighth birthday is coming up soon, so uh, that's pretty neat. Anyway, that'll be all for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.